Welcome back to CBS Mornings. Our Earth 365 series is all about the health of our planet. And this morning, we're focusing in on an alliance of small island states threatened by rising sea levels. One of those states is the Western Pacific nation of Palau. While it struggles to adapt to climate change, the country is also embroiled in a debate over the future of the ocean's resources. CBS Sunday Morning correspondent Lee Cowan went for a swim with the former president of Palau to see a marine paradise in peril. For the islanders of Palau, climate change is hardly a new idea. For thousands of years, their ancestors have been carefully managing their most precious natural gift, their ocean. The turquoise waters in the maze that are the rock islands are pristine, almost as if man had never been here before. Palauans call it the nest of life. The waters here are teeming with more than 1,500 species of fish, more than 700 species of coral. There's so much to look at, it's pretty easy to get lost in all the dazzling display. God, it's unbelievable. Where's the boat? <laughs> the person with our boat is none other than the former president of Palau, Tommy Remigasau Jr., who did, in fact, come back for us. We are in an area where uh, absolutely no commercial fishing whatsoever. Nothing? No. In his first term in 2006, he joined with other Micronesian nations and banned commercial fishing and drilling across 30% of Palau's waters. That was a start, but Remigasau wanted more. He grew up in these waters. As a boy, he'd actually swim inside some of the region's most famous underwater residents. Palau's giant clams. We would climb inside the, the giant clam. Inside the clam? Inside the clam. And these old uh, clams would not, wouldn't be able to close all the way. So, <laughs> so you're kind of safe in a way. <laughs> when he was re-elected in 2015, he set about what would become his legacy. He argued for a full 80% closure of Palau's waters. That's an area bigger than the state of California. If you're concerned about the welfare of the people, if you're concerned about maintaining the population of the marine resources, then you have to do something drastic. In 2020, the Palau National Marine Sanctuary finally became one of the largest protected marine areas in the world. It doesn't matter where you live. Uh, you are either a part of the problem or part of the solution. But the sanctuary's future is now uncertain. Palau's current president, Sarango Whips Jr., is considering reducing the size of the protected area in an effort to jumpstart Palau's local economy. It makes it challenging because when I talk to my friends in the Pacific about closing off large areas, they're like, well, what, what's going to happen to the revenue that we're currently getting? When the foreign fishing fleet left Palau, it took with it a lot of jobs. But since there's no domestic fishing fleet here, that meant it also removed the source of tuna from much of the local market. When you go too far in one direction, what do you think happens? They revolt and they want to get rid of everything. That's not what we're doing. We're trying to optimize and actually improve and make it better. That's welcome news to fisherman Jackson Narinas. I think the intent of the law also was to develop the uh, local fishing industry, people like me. He says it cost him as much as $15,000 to fuel up just one of his boats. But he says the 20% where he is allowed to fish isn't actually where the fish are. There's no fish here. Come and visit. Whip says uh, it's not about percentages. Really it's about finding the sustainable balance between protection and production. So essentially what you're saying is bigger isn't necessarily better. Right. So it's about replacing what's lost to make sure that that resource that we're protecting still has a benefit back to the people. Former President Tommy Remigasau doesn't buy that economic argument. To him, that sounds a lot like the foreign fishing lobby casting its political net just to get back in the market. It's not like we're dying because of lack of fishing revenues. We more than can make up for it. But whatever happens, he says at least the debate has focused attention on Palau, which for generations has been doing more to protect the world's oceans than countries thousands of times its size. We're happy that people take notice of what Palau is doing, but that's the idea. Take notice and do something. 
For CBS Mornings, I'm Lee Cowan in Palau.